So welcome back to another episode, and I'm already starting to laugh about this, and I, I really shouldn't be in a lot of ways, but, you know, it's funny, I was talking to some friends of mine on the phone the other day, and they're like, man, John, you're so much nicer than you used to be. And I'm like, what? Really? Was I that much of an asshole? And they're like, you used to be the biggest asshole back in the day, and I was like, wow, and I started to kind of go backwards in time and think about all of these things. And we're talking many years ago, some of these stories are from like 28 years ago, when I was like, you know, 15, 16 years old. I, I don't know, I had a bit of a, an attitude problem uh, because I was just a, a young, punky, idiot teenager, you know, like uh, hormones kind of going on and just being a fuckhead uh, to his friends. I was always super nice to my girlfriends and girls, but to guys, I was an asshole. I was very, very competitive in video games. I just, I would play against, like, my, say, my friend Andrew. We'd be playing Double Dragon on the Master System. And I'd just get a bat in the game and just start beating him with it. And I didn't care. And that became the game to me, was just beating him up. He's like, come on, can we, like, play the game? I'm like, no, no. I was, like, so into that. And I just thought I'd tell some stories and just say, you know what, I've mellowed over age, I've become a lot nicer, and I think that's because of maturity. Kicked in quite a few years ago for me now, but I started to think back and I was like, oh my god, I used to, some of the things I used to do, I cannot quite believe I did, and uh, you know, like some of them have follow-up stories that are not so uh, funny, actually. Like, there's this one kid, uh, guy who was my age, he, he was taller and bigger than me, and he was a he was a bit of a, an unusual character in our skateboarding group. His name was Jason Richardson, and he was a he was a bad apple himself. And uh, so in our in my group of friends, we all we always used to bug each other and pick on each other and take each other to a point of no return. So. You know, and that, I think that's the thing why I'm pretty strong online about you know, comments or anything like that because it's all being said to me. My own best friends insulted the hell out of me when I was young and I did the absolute same thing to them. And it boosts your defense mechanism because after a while it's like, okay, what else you got? Is that it? Okay. And so we were just a big group of people that bugged the fuck out of each other all of the time. And we became very, very tough because of it, but... So this one guy, Jason Richardson, he was just such a, a dumb fucking asshole. And he was a kleptomaniac beyond reality. This guy stole so much stuff. I could make an entire video on him about all the things. He, he would break into concession stands and steal all of the candy. Not some of it, I mean all of the candy back in the day and I I never stole or got involved in anything like that. I was way too nervy to do that, you know, type of thing, but I'd let him go and do that. I got a story about him doing that in a second, but I have my earliest memories of hanging out with Jason Richardson, I, God, I was an ass. He would come over to my place and, okay, here's a story about Super Mario Brothers 3. I had gone to my local mall, just one store over from where, where I bought, bought Dynamite Ducks, um, but they were selling Super Mario Brothers 3, the import version with an adapter. And this is before the American version came out. And I went up and I spent like a hundred dollars back then. And that was, that was a lot of money. It's not a lot of money now. So could you imagine it back then? And uh, so I got the game and I quite literally was very, very, became even a very popular guy in the neighborhood. Everybody wanted to come over to play Super Mario Brothers 3. And for anybody else, they could easily come into my place and play it. Especially my friend Andrew, anybody like that, no problem. But Jason Richardson, I remember him knocking on my door. And this guy's a kleptomaniac, you really didn't want him too much around you. And he's like, hey, hey, uh, I heard you got Super Mario Brothers 3. And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, oh, can I play it? I'm like, no. And he's like, oh, um, well, what, what, how can I, like, like, what can I do to, to play it? I'm like, okay, go up to the mall. Oh, this is way up the road. I said, get me uh, a packet of dill pickle chips, a crispy crunch, 
and what was the other thing? Oh, and a Diet Pepsi. It was those three things. Uh, dill pickle chips, uh, Krispy Crunch, and a Diet Pepsi. I don't know even why I drank Diet Pepsi. I like Diet Pepsi back then. I haven't drank it in years. I said, you bring me those three things, and I'll let you in, and you can play. And he's like, oh, okay, okay. So off up the street he went. He, I guess he went to 7-Eleven. I don't think he bought this stuff. I think he acquired it through his hands. And so all of a sudden, must have been about half an hour later, it's a knock on my door, I open it up, and uh, <laughs> it was so funny. He said, here, and he had a bag full of all that stuff. I took the bag and I shut the door, and I shut it for a second. I think I opened up the chips and I ate the chips, and he's like banging on the door, he's freaking out, screaming, hey, fuckers, you know, I can play Super Mario Bros. 3, what the fuck, what the fuck, and I was like, taking my time, eating my Krispy Crunch, taking a sip of Diet Pepsi, and then I was like, okay. So I open the door, I'm like, okay, you can come in, come on in, sure, come on. So he sits down and I'm like, and so he had brought uh, a, a Diet Pepsi, a Krispy Crunch and dill pickle chips for himself. I guess he liked that I had done this order and he decided to order the same thing for himself. So he, was, he on the couch had that. And I don't even know why, I just, I also remember this memory. I got on the couch, I, I, not, not playfully, I was playful, I wasn't like beating him. But I was beating him, I stole his chips, I stole his Pepsi, and I stole his Krispy Crunch. I just started eating them, eating them and it, he's freaking out, and it, it's, it's funny for me, I, I know. Terrible! This is why I made the fucking episode, I was a very fucking asshole guy. Uh, only to this guy, really, in particular. You know, after a long period of time, I was playing the game, I said, well, can I play him? I'm, no, absolutely not. And then finally, I did let him play. And all that kind of stuff. And here's a story that I've never told. Is that there used to be a Radio Shack uh, up the road from us. And Jason Richardson went in there. And I had put into, uh, into his head, I'm like, man, there's a, there's a TurboGrafx kiosk outside Radio Shack, Jason. Hmm, what do you think? And he's like, and if there's a knock on my door one day, he fucking, he fucking stole the turbo graphics from the kiosk out front. This is 28 years ago, folks. And uh, he brought it over, and I'm like, oh my god. So he brought it over, and we were playing turbo graphics, and I'm like, how did you do it? He's like, oh, they just didn't have any security on it. So he goes, I just waited till they all turned around. I just unhooked everything and just took everything. Took it straight out of the front kiosk of a Radio Shack, and uh, this is where he's an asshole. I'm not the asshole. He brought it over to my house. I didn't hang on to it for uh, about a week or so, and just to play Turbo Graphics. I was a poor kid. I enjoyed playing uh, like the Turbo Graphics if I could get a hold of it. I was like, this is a legendary system, and I wasn't gonna get one until I don't know when. And so what eventually happened is some kids told on him. I guess he went around the school bragging that he stole a Turbo Graphics out of Radio Shack, and then some kid went to the principal, and then the principal pulled Jason in, and uh, and it was like, okay, uh, like you, you stole this. Uh, we just got in touch with Radio Shack. You need to go and get the Turbo Graphics and give it back to Radio Shack, or they're gonna press charges. And he's like, okay. So he came over to my house and uh, took the Turbo Graphics away from me reluctantly, but obviously I gave it back to him so he could give it back to Radio Shack so he would not ha be prosecuted, even though he was like 16 years old, but whatever. That's some of the crazy people I was hanging out with when I was younger, and he, the thing with Jason, he went on to do terrible, terrible things, and it's really sad, like, it was in his blood to steal, and he just completely stole so much after that. And he eventually got into heavy drugs and just, and here's the thing, here's what's crazy is, this is 20 years ago, when I moved to New Westminster where I live now, in Vancouver here, I would see him occasionally, and he's a crack addict now, he's a full on crack addict. And it's not for me beating him up and stealing his dill pickle chips back in the day, he just had a real lust for drugs. A lot of my friends did, and they really got into it and stuck with it. And uh, some of my friends got out of it. A lot didn't. I lost a lot of friends through drugs. Isn't that crazy? Over the years. And I bumped into him quite a lot. And it's so weird. I probably see him now at least once every two weeks walking down the street. And he nearly died a few years ago from a heart attack. Uh, from doing crack, and his leg got really infected, and, uh, oh man, it kind of, 
it kind of chokes me up because he is he is one of my childhood friends. As much as we had problems and we were didn't see eye to eye, and I was a bit of a dick to him, he's a bit of a dick to society. He still was a childhood friend of mine, and it's so sad to see him in crack. And I I saw him a couple of weeks ago, and uh, Kim was with me, and I'm like, hey Jay, like let's get a photo together, and we took a photo together, and he's trying to get himself cleaned up and. And then I saw him about five days later, and he was back to being really screwed up again. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's really sad about that. But, you know, like, anyways, just back to me being an asshole for a second is that, yeah, I don't, I don't know why. I just had a funny competitive attitude with some of my friends. Like, I remember I tortured Rob for years with Street Fighter Alpha. And he would come over, and I would, I would always play Ken. He would always play Ryu. And I would absolutely decimate him every day. But I'd train him as well, so he'd be the best player he could be in Street Fighter. Because I needed competition. This is back before online, so the only way you could become good at playing a game against somebody is if you knew them, they were in your same town, and they were good. And so I had to train Rob to be good. But I remember egging Rob on so much that I remember him sitting in the basement with me and Andrew. And I'm going, I, you know, and he had a key, he had a freaking Ryu keychain at the time. He's like, and, I, and I'm like, and I'd be like, yeah, hi, you like that clown? You like that? And we we even did a, a Halloween special where we kind of mocked the way I used to be bugging him back in the day. But this one day, it was like 11.30 in the morning, my friend Andrew's in the basement, me and Rob, and I just, I bugged Rob so much about losing and just egged him on and all that, that he just ripped off the Ryu necklace and he threw it at the, like, the PlayStation. I had it. I've had enough of this shit. I'm not fucking taking it anymore. I'm not taking it from you anymore. Fuck you. And he fucking ran upstairs, uh, like, because I lived in the old house. And he ran out of the basement to the front door and he goes, Fuck you. And he slammed the door. And I just remember me and my friend Andrew were in the basement. And I just remember looking over Andrew and Andrew's just like, and he's got his mouth up like, What the fuck happened there? And then I just started laughing hysterically because that's the kind of person I used to be back in the day. And it's so funny how much nicer I become over the years. I I become a lot more chilled out. If I beat somebody now, I I'm like there, there. Sorry about that. <laughs> you know, but it, it's kind of funny. But I just wanted to bring up a couple of stories about my friend Jason, who stole the Turbo Graphics out of Radio Shack and uh, and did quite a few other other heinous crimes that I can still never talk about to this day because they were so bad with what he what he did and I kind of kind of came out of that kind of those people I was hanging out with and I ended up kind of mellow getting away from them and mellowing out and and then all of that stuff and I'm really thankful I got away from drugs and all of that like I I can't tell you this big group of friends of mine right out of high school there was probably mostly everybody in my group I hung out with went into heroin can you believe that? And I didn't. And I, I don't know, as I told you that story that I, I went to England and I came back and I had a renewed love of life and appreciation for my hobbies and video games and all that kind of stuff. And yeah, you know what? I may be into uh, video games and uh, movies uh, and anime and all that kind of stuff. But you know what? I got away from a really bad scene and Video games are my drugs now, and uh, this is like what I'm into now, and I'm really thankful for that, and I'm really, really, you know, I have a really sorrow heart for all of my friends that didn't get away from it, and there's only so much you can do. I saved a lot of my friends, and I got them into drug rehabilitation places, and I saved a lot of them, but there's a lot of people I couldn't save, and there's some friends of mine that have died in the last few years uh, from over-drinking, and uh, heroin use and the combinedness of all of that and uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't know I'd get into the whole drug thing. I was I went in talking about me being a bad guy, but it was also the environment I was in and the people I was around and and all of that and it could have been a lot worse for me. And thank God it wasn't. And you know what? I'll buy a special edition version of a game nowadays and stay away from all the bad crap in life. And uh, what do you, what's it like for you guys? Do you guys have friends like that? Are you surrounded by good people in your life? Do you try to surround yourself with good people in your, in your life? I, I really 
I've got a great group of friends around me now uh, that are very positive and very good influences in my life and I try to be that to other people. And that's also another reason why I do the show. I try to be a kind of a bit of a positive force here on YouTube. I can't do a lot, but I can only, you know, I can do a little bit and I'll try to do that. So anyways, guys, until next time.